In the last podcast, I introduced the Big O notation, which is analogous to less than or equal to. It provides an upper bound. Now we're going to look at omega, which is a lower bound, and theta, which is asymptotic equality, essentially. It's a tight bound. Okay, what if we want to ask what is the best case runtime, best possible that an algorithm can get? We can't really use the big O analysis because that's giving us an upper bound. You know, we, we can't say, well, the best is no worse than this. That doesn't really make sense. We want to say the best is no better than this. So we need a asymptotic lower bound on the growth rate. So, for example, in the insertion sort, we showed that best we can expect is in proportion to n. It's never going to be faster than that. It's got, it'll take a proportion to n just to check that the thing is sorted in the, in the case that it is already sorted. So we need a notation for lower bound, and that's what this omega will give us. So the definitions for omega are very simple revisions of the one we just saw for big O. The um, set definition which I'll write out a little bit more briefly this time. It's a set of all functions such that there exists, again, positive constants. I'm not writing that down. Uh, C and N naught uh, such that 0, C, G, N, F of N for all and greater than or equal to N naught. What's changed here? Well, these two have been switched. Now our function is essentially an upper bound on the reference function, although it's more accurate to say the reference function is a lower bound on our function. We've just swapped those two. The um, other version of it for testing the truth conditions, uh, can we prove that a given f of n is in this set, g of n, we say, if and only if there exists uh, C and N naught such that, again, and the same thing is written out over here, F of N, I'm going to write it out this way, though, C, G of N greater than or equal to 0 for all N greater than or equal to N naught. So those are the truth conditions that we test. So the semantics is that as n increases after some point, f of n grows no slower than g of n. And again, we can illustrate this. Um, draw a um, function for our reference function, uh, c g of n. And let's draw another line for the function we're studying. And so the point here is that after some n naught, f of n will always be above cg of n. So cg of n provides a lower bound. Uh, to uh, look at an example, let's consider square root of n is omega of log of n. And you can show this with uh, c equals 1 and n naught equals 16. Oops, I have a little mistake here. Square root of n. Okay, so at n not equals 16, the square root of 16 is equal to 4, and um, uh, of course the log, uh, which is base 2 of 16, is equal to 4. So they're equal at that point. And then as you grow, you would then have to sh show that the um, square root of n will always grow faster than log n. For example, consider n is equal to uh, 64, whereas the, you know, the log of base 2 of 64, um, of course, is, is 6. And we can show this with a graphing calculator. Here, for example, is a graphing calculator. Let's graph the square root of y is the square root of x grows like that. And now let's add a second graph, which will be y 
is the log of x. Now you may say, oh, you're using base 10 log, not base 2 log. Uh, at the end of topic 3, I will note that the base doesn't matter because it turns out to be a constant difference. So notice how that log graph is growing much less than the square root graph. OK, just like we did for big O, let's look at what's uh, in the set omega of n squared, functions that are bounded below by n squared. Just like we had with big O, n squared is in that set. And so is n squared plus 1000n. Uh, so it's interesting that these are also in big O of n squared. So these are not mutually exclusive. And in fact, that overlap is going to be what we call theta. And the same points apply to um, constants. You can add 1000n, and that's still bounded below by n squared. Or you could subtract it. It doesn't matter because the growth rate is dominated by uh, that term in all of these cases. And of course, something that grows faster than n squared, like n cubed, or indeed n to the 2.0001. So it's kind of flipped from last time. So of course, you might expect then uh, not n would include n to the 1.9999, because no um, choice of constant can make n squared grow slower than this. And of course, n, log n, and various others. Now we will go on to looking at when we combine big O and omega. As you've just seen, we can say things like n squared is big O of n cubed. Well, that's no, not so interesting. You know, that's kind of a loose bound. It would be better to say uh, n squared is, well, rather than is, I'll write n squared. But this still isn't sufficient. This isn't as much information as we really have. This just tells us that the growth of this function is bounded above by n squared. But we also know that n squared is bounded below by n squared. In other words, we have a tight bound on the growth of n squared. We know that it won't grow any faster or slower than n squared, which seems kind of obvious. But lacking in notation, we don't want to have to write both of these things at once all the time. So the notation we're going to use is theta. So for example, we can write theta. We can write n squared is theta of n squared, meaning it grows no faster or no slower than n squared. So let's look at the definition here. The definition is a combination of the definitions for big O and omega. So it's going to be a little more complicated, but all the parts make sense if you just step through it. So first of all, the set definition, theta of g of n is a set of all functions such that there exists, and uh, we're always talking about positive constants here, so I won't, won't write that down. We're going to need two of them because we need one for the omega side of the de definition and one for the big O definition. But we only we can get by with just one and not uh, such that. And then here's the more complicated part. We're going to bound below with zero. And then we're going to say C1, G of n, bounds below. That, so that serves the function, that serves the purpose that we got out of omega, uh, the function we're interested in. And some other constant, g of n, bounds it above. So this serves the role of the, um, the big O part for all n greater than or equal to n naught. So if you examine the two definitions for big O and omega, this is just a combination of them. And in a similar manner, we can write out a definition for the test that f is a member of it. I won't do that, but I will write out a little theorem here that's not hard to prove. You can prove this just by writing out definitions and combining them. f of n is theta of g of n if and only if f of n is omega of g of n and f of n, of course, is big O of g of n. So this is a situation where we bound from both above and below. So let's use green or some function g of n, uh, c2 g of n, 
and maybe this purple or some function um, C1 G of N that we bound from below and then let's throw in our F here so at some point F might you know wander around but at some point it's got to end up bounded in squeeze between these two bounded in between them notice that G that's the same function here G and G but we just got to be able to choose a constant that makes it bound from below and a different constant that makes it bound from above once you pass some where is it right here some n naught so you got to prove that after we get past this initial low level noise as the input well i'm now phrasing this in terms of algorithms rather than mathematical functions uh, in terms of mathematical functions this is all about mathematics at some point this is never any smaller than that never any bigger than that but we use this to think about algorithms so for example after the input size grows after some size of the input eventually the runtime is going to be bounded by this function using these two constants so this gives us a tight bound when you when you're doing analysis and you can say something with theta always use theta if you can because it gives more information if you just give a, a big o you're only giving the upper bound if you just give omega you're only giving the lower bound theta gives us more information Okay, here I've written out the truth conditions version of the definition where we give the condition for a function to be a member of the set. And I'm going to run another example for you. We want to show that n squared minus 2n is theta of n squared. And to do that, again, this expression I just wrote serves the role of f. And this expression here, sorry, that expression right there, serves the role of g. So all you do is you write out this definition, plugging those in, and then you figure out what would make it true. So let's give that a try. So we're going to write out, we want it to be true that 0 less than or equal to C1 G of N, which is N squared, less than or equal to F of N, which is N squared minus 2N, which is less than or equal to C2 N squared. So when might this be true? Well, this is subtracting an n, a lower order n term. So this part here is not going to be hard. This will be already true with, um, even if c2 is 1, this is going to be true pretty quickly. But the harder part is down here, where we need to give c1 a term that just makes sure that this one always stays smaller than that. And so what I suggested was, uh, let's say c1 is equal to 1 half. And let's say C2 is equal to 1. And we're going to say n naught equals 4. Uh, so if we plug those in, I'll leave out the 0 this time. n squared divided by 2 is less than or equal to n squared minus 2n less than or equal to uh, 1 times n squared. 4 n greater than n naught, which is 4. Uh, so you can see that this will be true because 4 squared divided by 2, that's going to be 8. Yeah, 16 minus 8 will be 8, and 4 squared will be 16 at that point. And of course, then I have to show that um, um, that continues to be true as n grows. Uh, so clearly as n grows, n squared is going to grow faster than n squared minus 2n. And the, perhaps the harder part to show would be that, well, as n, n squared grows, by dividing by 2, you're reducing it by much more than by subtracting 2n. Because here you're, you're um, removing 1 half of n squared. You Here you're only removing uh, 2 of n, so that's not removing as much. And of course you could write that argument out more mathematically. Uh, I want you to try doing it yourself. First, uh, try it with 4n cubed. Find an asymptotically tight bound for it. Uh, this clearly won't be um, theta of n squared. Uh, find the bound that you think will work and prove it. And then try it for 4n cubed plus 2n. Uh, it's fairly obvious that you're going to be aiming for theta of n cubed, but you're going to have to write out these definitions and... Um, see how you can show it and then go on to my website notes and there's a link called solutions and you can click on that and uh, see how I did it there.
Okay, here we go again. Who is in and who's out? In, for example, of course, n squared, n squared plus 1,000 n. Remember, this is, these were both in the theta and omega. Other forms of polynomials, you know, 10 n squared plus uh, 16 n plus uh, 3, 1, 7, 4, 2, 0, 0, 0. Uh, it doesn't matter how big this number is here. It's constant. It doesn't grow. You're going to have to throw a big C in to overcome it, but you'll overcome it. Don't be fooled by large, con large constants. If it was uh, 10n squared plus 16n, um, sorry, minus something like that, you know, 3174200. In one case, it's going to be harder to show that the upper bound holds. In the other case, it's going to be harder to show the lower bound holds. Holds, but in both cases, these are just constants, and you can overcome them with big constants. Uh, not in theta of n squared would be n cubed. You can't possibly bound that from above with n squared. n 2.00001, which remember we couldn't bound with omega with a uh, big O. n point one nine 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 nine. So the two examples that didn't work with big O and omega won't work here because this has to meet both big O and omega. Uh, n log n is another one. It's not theta of n squared. n log n is big O of n squared because it's bounded by above, but it's not theta of n squared. Well, we've introduced the most important asymptotic notation, big O, omega, and theta. The next podcast will introduce two others, little o and little omega, and we'll also discuss the use of these notations and equations.